I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Jets are fantastic power plants for airplanes. The trouble is, the reputation for being fuel thirsty in some flight conditions is deserved. Fuel economy is a very important question for most jet pilots, but fortunately it's a question that does have a correct answer. Consider this example for a moment. A Williams FJ44-1A engine installed in a Cessna 525. At takeoff power at sea level, it's burning a thousand pounds per hour of fuel. But as you climb, that number changes dramatically. By 25,000 feet, you're down to 500 pounds per hour. By 41,000 feet, it's down to 300 pounds per hour, less than a third of what it was at takeoff. Why is that? The answer is a word that sounds scary, but is actually fairly simple. Stoichiometry. The ratio of air to fuel that's required in a jet engine for proper combustion remains about constant. But as you climb, there's less air available to the engine. Therefore, the demand for fuel drops off. Remember, as you climb through the atmosphere, air density drops off precipitously. Now the trade-off there is that with less air and less fuel, the engine produces less thrust. But with lower air density, there's less drag on the airplane as well. So it balances itself out. Let's consider a couple of airplanes flying at different altitudes just to drive this point home. A Cessna 525 flying from, say, Seattle to Chicago might have a cruise stage length of 1,100 nautical miles. That's discounting the climb, discounting the approach, just focusing on the cruise portion. That airplane flying at 35,000 feet will be flying at 379 knots true airspeed. It'll be doing about 45.8 nautical miles per 100 pounds of fuel, and therefore require about 2,400 pounds of fuel for the entire cruise. With reserves required and with a total capacity for a Cessna 525, you're right on the edge of being able to do that flight, let alone do it legally. The same airplane, at the same weight, flying at 41,000 feet, will be flying at 346 knots true airspeed, but it will be flying 56.2 nautical miles per 100 pounds of fuel that it burns. That's about 1,960 pounds for the cruise stage. 440 pounds of fuel. That's the difference between 35,000 feet and 41,000 feet. The difference in airspeed is about 18 minutes. But if you look at the fuel savings, 440 pounds at $5 per gallon, which is the prevailing rate in the Northwest region where I am based, is about $330. $330, 18 minutes, the math really does work out for most owner-flown airplanes. Mm -hmm.